first of all, first I want to apologize. And I don't remember all the guys who were exactly the guys. Vladimir Matyshenko was one of them. Grispy was one of them. And there were a few other guys that when Ariel Hawani tweeted that, they didn't know that they were cut. And that is 100% my fault. I take full responsibility for it, and I apologize. Because, first of all, Vladimir Matyshenko, I've known him since we bought this company. I, I, I love that guy. I respect him very much as a fighter, and I have a great relationship with him, and I always have. And uh, it, it, it's bothered me for the last two days that I did that to those kids. To find out on Twitter or through somebody else that you were cut instead of getting the phone call first. You know? And believe me. I got the Joe Silva fucking phone call that, that, that hadn't even been relayed to the fighters yet, you know, and, and I, it, I, I really do apologize to all the guys that that happened to. Number two, this is a fucking sport just like NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, or any other sport. Now, everybody is so, I mean, the words that I was reading on Twitter, fucking, this is a travesty. This is like, like a fucking... Tidal wave hit the biggest populated place on fucking planet Earth and wiped out tons of women and children and innocent people. Give me a fucking break, okay? This is a sport just like any other sport. Woodson just got cut. The Green Bay Packers just cut Woodson, okay? And a million other guys are getting cut, traded, and everything else. John Fitch is ranked number nine. Okay, however you want to look at that, he's ranked number nine. Whether you think it's right, it's wrong, or the rankings are bullshit or whatever. It's ranked number nine right now, right? Now, this isn't a case where John Fitch was ranked number nine, number seven, number six, number four, number two, and then we cut him. He was ranked number one. Fought for the title. Then he was ranked number two. He was ranked number three, six, seven, and now he's nine. That's called the downside of your career. He's on the downside. He's fought, he's lost two, two fights, one draw, and one one fight. And, everybody, and then I saw stuff. I just wanted, because I got shit in my head from Twitter and all the other shit that I've been reading, right? Oh, it's because he beat Eric Silva. He beat his guy in Brazil and all this shit. Who the fuck is Eric Silva beat? That was Eric Silva's first real fight. It was a great fight. They won fight of the night. He won a bonus for it. Okay? Now, John Fitch can go out now, and he can... Viacom's got plenty of money. Okay? Viacom MMA isn't hurting for fucking cash. Uh, and and uh, there's a lot of other places where this guy can go, and he can make some money. The other thing is, John Fitch was ranked number one in the world, and yes, John Fitch gets paid a lot of money to put John Fitch on a fucking prelim, or put John Fitch over here. The, great, the difference between John Fitch and Charles Woodson, that just got cut, right? John Fitch can go get a couple more fights and come back to the UFC. Happens every fucking day, all the time. So it's not like John Fitch was on this incredible fucking winning streak. One of the greatest fucking welterweights in the history of the world. This guy's a fucking Hall of Famer. Guy's never won a fucking title in his life. What do you, what do you consider a Hall of Famer? If fucking John Fitch is a Hall of Famer, it's gonna, that fucking thing's going to be packed. It's going to be one fucking huge Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? How much does his style factor into it? I think that's a lot of questions. Look, here's like. the other thing. Wait, before we get to his style... Here's the other thing. Dana hates John Fitch. He's hated him forever, and he's just been waiting to cut him since that video game deal. Are you fucking shitting me? There's nobody in the history of this business that I hated worse than Tito Ortiz. You know what I mean? Every time I'd sit down in my chair and watch the fight, I'd be like, beat his ass. That's how bad I hated this guy. He ended his career in the UFC. There are guys... Ju Rampage Jackson was just spewing all kinds of craziness about us. Came in the fight, he fought. I saw him in the backstage, I shook his hand, shook his hand before the fight, and then when he walked away, he said, you're gonna miss me. I said, I miss you already, brother. You know what I mean? No hard feelings. This whole John Fitch, Dana battle is so fucking overrated. I don't have one ounce of hate for John Fitch. I don't, I don't hate the guy at all. I don't even dislike him. Not even a little bit. I like John Fitch. So I, give me some feedback here. So what's... So the style. How much does style? his style factor yeah. into? Because he, he I got, is... I got... Listen. Uh, what's, what's his name? I get crazy and everything jumps out of my head. <coughs> he just fought in England. Riddle. Riddle. Thank you. Let's talk about Riddle. Do I hate him? Do 
Do I hate his style? Am I going to try to get him out of here now? And I'm going to... Riddle fights just like Fitch. Same fight. Well, yeah, it's been lately. And anyway, he went from being super exciting to now, you know, he wants to grab your legs and hold you down and lay... You know, it's part... It's, this is mixed martial arts. What made the, the Eric Silva-John Fitch fight so great is that Eric Silva could actually neutralize his wrestling a little bit and hit him with some strikes. That's what made it such a great fight. You know, it actually goes the other way. If you're a guy who can actually be laid on, Shea Mills, people are fucking, Shea Mills was cut? If you didn't know how I felt about the way Shea Mills fought that night, this is the UFC. This is the pinnacle of this sport. The best fighters in the world fight here, okay? And if you get that top position with 35 seconds left, and then you just stand there, and then you stand up, and then you walk away, and then you get double-legged again for the last 25 seconds, you didn't want that fucking fight bad enough. Fans are going crazy on me. He was tired! Well, if you're that fucking tired in three rounds, you don't belong here either. You should be in better shape than that. So what's your recommendation? The recommendation is this is a fucking combat sport, one of the toughest sports in the world, and anybody who's a professional athlete, you know you have that window. Make the fucking most of it while you're here. So is it better to fight safe and try to get the win so you don't get cut, or is it better to go, to go out there and maybe you get knocked out? If that's the way you think when you go out and fight, maybe you shouldn't be here either. What you should do is you should go out and try to be the best in the world. And you should try to whoop everybody's ass as impressively. It depends on how much money you want to make, you know? Do you want to go around and lay on guys? How many people are beating down the door, you know, to, to, to see uh, any of those guys fight again? You know, and actually, the response that John Fitch has had is awesome. I'm glad that that many people are behind him and support him. That's not a bad thing. Good for him, you know. But I can tell you this, John Fitch isn't cheap. So, good. You know, Viacom MMA has some money. So, he can go out there right now. He can go out on the free market and find out exactly what he's worth. Right? I think what some people have a problem with is just the fact that, you know, like Leonard Garcia and Dan Hardy were defending themselves on Twitter yesterday. His fans were saying, you know, oh, you guys still have a job. You guys keep losing. I mean, can you just, I, I think that all of us, and you talk about the bubble, we can, we can say, well, there are some fighters who are in the UFC primarily, and they're great fighters, but for entertainment value. So the, no, that's balance. not true. So the question, here's the question. Any fucking, look at any sport, anybody who owns a team or a league or anything like that, when you look at your, I have, here, here's another fact. We have 470-something guys under contract, Okay. We have over 100 guys too many. We have over 100 guys too many on the roster right now. Okay? So what's going to happen is when you lose, it, listen, the blood, the blood has not all been spilled yet. There's more coming. It's not every day you cut a top 10 fighter, though. Yeah. And that's why. Top 10 fighter on his way down the ladder. Well, yeah. Not on his way up the ladder. Maybe so, but John Fitch only lost three times in seven years. Yeah. And he tied And guess what's going to happen to John Fitch? He will end up at Bellator or one of these other organizations, and he will win a world title. He'll be a champion there. He will smash every single guy over there, and he'll be a champ. If he gets a few fights outside, do you think he'd welcome back? Uh, when has that never happened? A guy goes out, wins a few fights, has some impressive runs, and then comes back. I mean, this isn't the first guy we've ever cut. And the whole thing, like, this is the fucking... Biggest disaster in the history of the world. This shit's crazy. The guy's going this way. He's not going that way. He didn't go fucking nine, seven, six, five, four, and we cut him. He went number one to fucking number nine. And he's super fucking expensive. And he'll end up he'll end up somewhere and he can come back. Is that it? Kind of like you mentioned Kane deserving a re-up. You gave him the re-up even though you didn't need to. This is kind of the opposite of that. Is that yeah. how you view it? This is, this is the business. This is the sports business. It's the way it happens. You know? I mean, there's no better explanation than Charles Woodson. The guy won the Heisman Trophy for defense. <laughs> you know, defensive player. And, and, and you know, you, he, you, just, he just got cut. You could counter that, though, that Charles could go to another NFL team, and he's still playing in the NFL, the brand of the NFL. Yeah. For John, you strip the UFC brand. It's, it's difficult in that sense. Your guys are independent contractors. That's the sport. That's life. And, 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 and this is what I always tell these guys, man. When, 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 you know, we, when we talk, we're, we are only as good as our last fight. Not you. We. All of us. Me, the UFC, and the fighters 
we all feel it. When, when, when you have a bad fight and you go on a skid, it's not good for any of us. Were you expecting this type of you know, huh? fallout from the fans with cutting John Fitch? Were you expecting to get this type of reaction, or is it a little shocking? I never even thought about it. It's awesome. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the fans are behind John Fitch. You know what I mean? It's good. I don't hate John Fitch. I don't dislike John Fitch. But to say that this is like the biggest fucking tragedy in the history of the world and all the shit that was coming, I was like, this, this is fucking ridiculous. Dana, how involved are you in this? Like a- I'm involved in everything. So anything that goes wrong or anything you don't like, blame me. <laughs> blame me. Like a, like if there's a lower, less big name guy. Yeah, I wasn't calling Joe Silva up going, you fucking cut John Fitch? Of course. But did he say, I want to cut him? And he yeah. said, I agree. Or did you say, I want to cut him? How did that work? Our guys come to us and say, this is what we want to do. And then you say, Approve or disapprove. Has it ever happened where someone like Joe or Sean would say, I want to cut this guy? And you say no? Yeah. Okay. So you could- Anything that you don't like, any decision <laughs> that you don't like and you think is wrong and stupid and fucked up, is me. Blame me. <laughs> don't blame Joe Silva. Don't blame anybody else. Blame me. What do you blame on getting 100 fighters too heavy? Is it strike force, women, yeah. fly, fly No, weight? you know what? We, we, we've been, first and foremost, we, when you get in here, yeah, people like, oh, they're going to start kicking real fucking guys out to bring in the women and stuff. No. What's happened is, again, contrary to fucking popular belief, we're good guys. Guys lose some fights and they're like, you know what? Dan Hardy puts it out there all the time. We're going to keep Dan Hardy. I want to keep Dan Hardy. I want to keep Leonard Garcia because the guy's got fucking heart and he comes in and fights and does this. Thing. And then you get into a situation where you got a lot of guys here. You know? I tell the fucking guys from the Ultimate Fighter, every one of you are going to fight in the card. I tell you, you know, you get in these situations sometimes. You go on a fucking skid in this business. You got to go. And you got to come back. Go win some fights and come back. No different than it has ever been since day one of this company. Same exact thing. And when we cut a guy that's ranked number nine, the guy's on the way down the ladder, not up the ladder. So how long is the rope then for a guy like Uriah Faber? Yeah, uh, could be Saturday. You never know. There's over 100 guys who are heavy. Can you really say Fitch is on his so, way down? And though? the big question is, who? Can you really say Fitch is on his way down if he's only lost to two top five guys? Well, he was five. ranked number one fought for the title and now they got him ranked number nine I mean and if you really sat down yourself and honestly fought to a draw with BJ Penn right got knocked out by Hendricks and, and that division is a nasty fucking division I mean just this tournament we're doing up in uh, in Montreal you look at this thing and go like wow these guys are definitely all the best guys there right now where does John Fitch fit into that he, nine is probably correct but he still hasn't lost back-to-back fights. You know, you're saying he's on a skid, and I, I agree with you. Yeah, he hasn't had the best performances. Recently, well, he didn't lose, but... lose back-to-back fights. He had a draw, then a loss, right? Then a win, then a, win, then a, then a loss. Fight of the night win. Yeah. It's good. He got more money. Can you got go? fight of the night because it takes two guys to do that, right? If Eric Silva's wrestling wasn't right there, that wouldn't have been fight of the night. You understand what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, when you really break it down, you're just like, well, he's the only guy. He hasn't lost back-to-back. Who did Eric Silva beat? This was Eric Silva's first real big fight and real test. And it was a damn good fight, fight of the night. That's called a skid. Can you He's on the downside. He's not on the upside. He's not knocking guys off and buzzsawing through guys. He's not doing a, a Hendrix. He's not doing a, uh, you know, he's, he's not like the other guys in that division. And, you know, he had a draw before that. Got 100 guys, over 100 guys. So, out of any guy out there. And, and then again, going back to, so what does a guy do? Does he, does he fight safe? Does he do this? Oh, they're going to incentivize him. Let me tell you what you better do. You better fight your fucking ass off, make it good and win. That's the only way people want to see you. People want to see you when you're exciting. You know? Unfortunate. Sucks. It'd be nice if you could just go lay on a guy for three rounds and people would love it and want to buy all your pay-per-views. Welcome to the fucking real world, guys. It's not how it works. What I see people asking is, is this sport, is this entertainment, is this business? What is it? Because in a sport, if you win, you're around. You know, if you're ranked, you're around. How do you, how do you balance that all out? How, how do you figure that? If you're in a sport and you're ranked, and you're, how, what exactly does that mean? It's different. It's not, it's not, this isn't football or basketball. We're talking about combat sports. So you either have this or boxing to compare it to. Okay? And if you look at boxing, you have guys that are ranked. There's fucking 20 different rankings, and guys are all over the place. You know what I mean? And it doesn't mean that, that, that a guy actually, just because he's ranked number nine, this isn't a guy that was on his way up. He's like going up like a fucking missile, and we're like, that's it. 
He's at number three. Cut this guy. He's fucking making too much money. He's doing this and doing that. The guy is on a skid. Whether you want to admit it, you want to look at his record or however you want to do it, a skid is a skid. A draw, two losses, and a win, and the win is over a kid who hasn't fought anybody. But was it, but was it the prospect? The, the reason why people, many guys have been on skids. Yeah. The top ten guys. So that's what the team are like, all right, this guy's on a skid, this guy's But on I, a did, I did just say that. At the end of the day, you know. It's how. You're saying it's how. How you're, how you're fighting. No. Have you been here? I have. <laughs> <laughs> I said, first and foremost, don't ever think that this isn't a business because it is, number one. Right. It is a business. Number two, John Fitch makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He gets paid a lot of money, and he's on a skid. He's on his way down. Whether he's ranked number nine in the world or not, it doesn't mean that he's still, you know, that he's still going to stick down. around here. There's a hundred more guys going to go. You hear that one? Yes. So it, it has not, it's not over. Right. There's going to be other guys that are going to go. Some of the names that were thrown up there, I mean, Shea Mills, Super nice guy. I like Shane Mills. Shane Mills showed me that night he did not want it. And I, I, go, I go back to Bobby Green. I go back to Bobby Green. Bobby Green bought Volkman. Bobby Green did not fucking quit in that fight. Referee screwed him big time. Right when he finally gets that top position and he's doing damage, she stands him up. Right? The kid stayed in there and he fought to the end and he fought till he won. If you want to stay in this fucking company... That's how you better fight. That's what you better do.